Hey guys, it's Dragon Ball for Life here today, and I'm back with another video. Now, today's video, we're going to be reacting to Seth the Programmer's Premium Lights. Uh, I think this is one of his other accounts or channels that he has. We know his main channel, Seth the Programmer, which he hasn't uploaded that much on that channel anymore. He has like a couple, but not as much as he used to. But on this channel and these other like you know accounts that he has, he does upload quite a bit. And today's video, we're going to check out his uh, thoughts on light speed and fiction. And basically, the thumbnail was showing uh, light speed equals, uh, I think it was a measurable speed. And I have talked about this quite a bit, measurable speed and calculable speed, whatever. And I talked about how, you know, because the way that they, you know, calculate the speed is, oh, stop time or uh, no time and stuff. And I stated that if you move at the speed of light, you're basically stopping time. You're moving so fast that time stops uh, for you and around the world. So that's how it works. And that's why I don't really agree with those types of uh, definitions for higher terms of speed because I'm like, well, if you go at the speed of light, scientifically, technically, you would be moving at, you know, you would be moving, what's the thing called? You'd be moving faster than, uh, you'd be moving at those speeds just by going at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light. So let's check it out and see what he has to say about it in this video. Hey, still. I'm going to be real. Thank you for the $100. I just skipped quite a bit uh, because Superman has mm -hmm. a measurable speed, but you know what? Four hundred bucks. Let me tell you all something I've been thinking about, mm -hmm. and I've been thinking about this for a while. So recently, there have been some discussions about um, immeasurable speed in fiction and how it needs to be gauged differently. Mm -hmm. uh, people have been saying this about Superman for a long time, and DC and Marvel and all that. But in some fictions. Uh, moving at the speed of light lets you like move back and forth through time, right? Like you remember the old. I mean, technically, in science in real life, if you were to let's just say hypothetically move at the speed of light, you would be going through time. So yeah, he's saying some fictions do that, but that's the truest way of you know representation of, of being moving at light speed. It's just that. Uh, you know, when you see other comic books or like, you know, other works of fiction, they don't really accurately represent it too well. It's like going into outer space. A lot of these, you know, shows and stuff or like comic books have these characters going into deep space and then coming back and little to no time has passed or the time that passed uh, on Earth is the same that they were gone, which we all know that scientifically that's not correct. When you go, the faster you go and the further you go away, you know, the time starts to dilate differently. So going into deep space and coming back, time will work differently. Time will move slower on Earth, uh, no, actually faster on Earth than it is in outer space. And we check this out with like, you know, uh, clocks that we've set on like uh, uh, rocket ships on uh, out in outer space. And especially since these characters are going massive amount of distance away, like, you know, going to the Andromeda galaxy and going millions of light years away or even millions to billions of miles away which going that those distance will make the time on earth accelerate faster now sometimes in certain uh, certain types of fiction like let's say for example a regular show they had the one where they were playing basketball against the the basketball god or legend or whatever and they went in our space and played basketball and came back and by the time they came back even though they were just playing a bit of a pickup game which was possibly for like a couple of minutes uh, minutes they came back and like a couple months had passed and like, oh, really? So that showcased a more accurate representation of, you know, time dilation. Whereas in comics, they don't really take that into consideration because let's be honest, if Superman or any of these characters are going out to, you know, out of space to fight in, uh, you know, a threat or stuff, the last thing they need, it, the last thing that would be good for them is coming back to Earth that has passed years ahead without them because then the Earth would be in danger and they can't do anything. So it does mess up with the story writing, but that's how scientifically accurate it is. And the reason why I mentioned this is they don't always go scientifically accurate and, you know, fiction, but that's just how it is. Him saying they can go through time, that is naturally, of you to write out a character moving in speed of light, that's the correct way to do it. The only anime, or I mean, the only work of fiction that have shown, that they have shown a character moving at the speed of light that has been ac accurately translated was in Fire Force with Shinra. Shinra, when he was fighting against his brother, his brother had the power to cool down the universe, thus slowing down time. Now, I don't know if that's how 
I don't know if that's like logical of you can slow down time by cooling the universe down, but he did slow down time and Shinra was only able to handle this uh, time ability by moving at the speed of light. He wasn't moving faster than the speed of light, he was moving at the speed of light and it de dematerializes his body and rematerializes when he ends up in a place and within one second he was able to do a crazy amount of stuff and on top of it, he was able to go through stop time or slow down time uh, because he was moving at the speed of light. So yeah, just moving at light speed can allow you to do those things if it is accurately represented. So you don't need to be millions to billions of times faster to be light to be going through stop time or going through time. You don't need to have accessible speed or infinite speed or any of these ridiculous like claims because they're putting them way above uh, light speed. But Shinra alone light speed can do those things. It's just that that's the most accurate representation for light speed uh, travel. Old Superman movie. Uh, he was Plus Murphy. Force. He moves at the speed of light. Yeah, he's meant to in time and shit like that. So, um, that kind of shit. Uh, the only problem with that movie, the only problem with that movie when they did that was, um, when they did that in the Superman movie, the reason why he was going back in time was because he was rotating the planets. Uh, he was he was reversing the rotation of the planet, and somehow that rewinded time. Which scientifically and just logically, that doesn't make any sense going back around the earth so fast that it makes it rotate the counterclockwise is not going to reverse time time doesn't go forward just because it's going this way that's just just illogical that kind of shit um people are like okay well light speed in this fiction is just immeasurable then that's what they'll say but some other people might start saying well maybe you know Instead of it being immeasurable, it's just, you know, time and space just get warped by things that move that fast. So instead of them actually yeah. moving beyond infinite speed, uh, their universe just kind of has, like, weird space and time that, like... Yeah, I no offense to Seth, he seems like a smart guy. A lot of these dudes seem like smart people that talk about stuff. But the problem is they're looking through this through the lenses of science fiction. Science fiction is not an accurate representation of actual science. Somebody like me who does love science, I love science fiction stuff like that, but I hold science on a higher standard. So uh, for me personally, I've done more research on it, I've studied it, and I know more of it. And I know scientifically that that is how light works. He's trying to make it sound like, oh, these universes might have different, like, you know, light might work differently there. But no, that's how light actually works. If you were to move a light, uh, a light speed, you would be having technically immeasurable and incalculable and, you know, infinite speed because you would be able to do that stuff and stop time. So it's not like these other shows are just doing a, you know, a crazy representation of it. They're actually doing the most accurate representation majority of fiction that uses light speed travel use it incorrectly scientifically they're incorrect it, they, they move fast but then time is still not stopped and they're able to move around but if you ask somebody like you know um neil degrasse tyson if you watch his uh his youtube channel star talk he's mentioned it multiple times before moving at light speed basically stops time so no it's not that these shows are having some different form of you know uh, logic and stuff, they're actually using the correct one. Majority of them are using the incorrect one. So I disagree with him on that. Around things that move at the speed of light. Because when you do move at... You were to take because there's no way you can uh, logically move at the speed of light because you would have to have zero mass and infinite uh, energy. And none of these characters show an infinite energy and definitely they have no zero mass. So, yeah, I know it's like scientifically, like, well, yeah, in real life that's the case. But the thing is, the reason why that's the case is because it's so, that's an impossibility. If you were to do the impossible, you would be breaking the laws of physics. So these characters moving at light speed would technically should be breaking the laws of physics. But a lot of times they don't. It's just like moving just faster and doesn't do any real effects. But they should be uh, affecting time and space itself. That character moving like at moving light speed and put them in a universe where it doesn't warp time and space doing that. Then they'd just be light speed. As an example. Yeah. So, uh, or that universe that they don't do it is just inaccurate with their depiction of light speed travel and don't know what the hell they're saying. So we ignore that and go with the, what the other universe, uh, you know, states. Because in the end of the day, yes, it does depend on the universe they're at. And this is why I think uh, debating and power scaling or not power scaling, but, you know, debating versus and stuff who'd win in a fight is very more complex than a lot of people think because 
the laws of reality work different in each universe. Some might have some shared, uh, you know, concepts, but a lot of them do not add up to our real world and even others. For example, in DC, one of the most powerful thing you can do is create life. If you can create a planet or stars or humans and stuff, that's an uh, impressive and a godlike uh, feat. That's beyond destructive uh, feat. But in Dragon Ball, that's not the case. You look at, uh, you know, Supreme Kai's, they're the gods of creation. They create planets, they create stars, they create galaxies, they create nebulas, and they also create life. Whereas the gods of destruction like Beerus, they only destroy things, yet they're more powerful. So technically, if you put them up against each other, and you say, well, this character in DC can create life, so they're godly. But in Dragon Ball, there are godly beings that create life, but they're not the most powerful. Gods of destruction are significantly more powerful. Hell, you don't even need to be a god of destruction to be more powerful than them. Goku is in, uh, way more powerful than them, uh, you know, Supreme Kai and the, the Buu Saga. And Supreme Kai is a god of creation. So, like, how do you add those up? And also when it comes to speed, once again, speed is handled differently in different universes, like he stated. But he's trying to say, well, it doesn't count. No, no. Their one doesn't count because they're not accurately depicting it. Like Shinra is definitely doing it accurately, and they're doing it accurately fire first. So I give them a big thumbs up for you know accurately representing that. But um, once again, with the Dragon Ball, the Flash, he can go from he can go through time, he can go to other realities by you know just moving at the faster than the speed light and vibrating his molecules. Now it doesn't state specifically how fast he has to do to, uh, move to do that, but from what I heard, he only has to move a couple of times the speed of light to travel through uh, time and stuff. But in Dragon Ball, that's not the case. I don't think that's how t uh, you can manipulate time through just speed alone. Because look at Whis. Whis is in a, every time uh, Flash is manipulated with time with his speed, he was moving fast, but nowhere near as fast as the, as Whis was throughout the show. And I'm not saying Whis is faster than the Flash. I'm just saying throughout the times that he was messing with time, he was not moving at the speed as Whis was. Whis was able to go tra travel throughout the Earth. I mean, the entire universe, one end to the other, within like, I think like three hours or less, okay? So within three hours or less, that is quintillions of times the speed of light. That should be more than enough to make him travel through time, right? But he cannot, why? Because that's not how time works in Dragon Ball. Just moving incredibly fast or many times faster the speed of light is not gonna help you go through time. I don't even think in Dragon Ball you can manipulate time with speed alone. I think you have to use like an, uh, either a machine or an ability like hit's ability. So yeah, there's a difference in that, and that makes it far more complex to, you know, accurately depict who would win in a fight. I'm not going to say Superman isn't immeasurable speed, even with that in mind, but if you wanted something to think about, uh, there's some videos on that about how light, uh, moving at the speed of light can warp time and space. It does. There's even videos on YouTube about that as well. So if you can dissect every fucking Superman feat and just boil it down to that, then there you go, which I extremely doubt, but, you know, if you can, there you go. Um, and yeah, Cosmic Armor Superman beats the fuck out of Goku anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, if you're just talking about the normal Superman. I already uh, did a video debunking Cosmic Armor Superman because Seth the Programmer and Chuck and a lot of these guys, once again, big respect to them, but they get things wrong. I talked about it in the video where I, you know, I looked through the comic. There's nothing that showed that he was that powerful. I went through quite a bit, so go check it out again. It is very interesting video that I put quite a bit of, uh, you know, effort into it. Uh, people he, like him, he stated one thing that was completely wrong. He stated that even when he killed uh, Mandrake or whatever the guy's name was, he threw him off the thing. You can still hear him. Uh, you can still hear his voice, even uh, dying and stuff. But no, he was just thrown off the sledge that dropped him into the, you know, the normal uh, DC multiverse uh, on Earth instead of being in, uh, you know, the what's it called, the Monitor's realm, which is above their realm. And he was easily taken out by, you know, a couple of Supermen and a couple of Green Lanterns. A couple of Supermen uh, hit him with their heat vision, and the other Superman, ba uh, uh, Green Lanterns, basically threw a uh, giant um, stake through his chest, killing him. If he was that powerful, they wouldn't have been able to take him out. So how the hell is Cosmic Armor or Superman at OP? Not saying that Superman Goku would so win, but Cosmic Armor Superman is highly wanked to the point where they make him sound like he's an untouchable god, which he is not. Superman, like, uh, this pseudo composite one, Golden Age, Silver Okay, so that's it for this video. I I went through it. I, I edited it out, obviously. But I went through it thinking he had more. 
Uh, I thought this whole video was going to be talking about live speed and fiction, but I guess it was mostly a QA and a and that it was a bit of it. But I do feel like it's important to touch upon that. And like I said, set the programmer, Chuck, all these guys, they're good. But if I'm being honest, and I don't want to sound cocky, but I feel like they get so many things wrong that I could easily debunk a lot of their arguments and statements. They do look at stuff like these feats from these characters' surface level, and they do kind of sound like a little bit like... Um, how do I say? I don't want to say fanboys, but like, you know, there's some Dragon Ball fans that don't know anything about Superman. So like, well, we're just going to listen to what has been stated by other comic book fans a thousand times over. And instead of looking into it ourselves, just say, well, they stated this. So they're, they are that powerful. I just feel like, uh, and like I said, no offense to him, but I don't feel like Chuck, uh, Seth, and a lot of these guys are that great of power scales. I think I'm a better power scaler than them if I'm being honest. I think a lot of their power scaling uh, comes in incorrect. And that's why we have statements like, you know, now we have these different categories like inaccessible speed and stuff. Because if you think about it, moving at light speed alone will be allowed you to, you know, surpass those things. You don't need to move faster than light or move many times faster than light to be able to accomplish those feats. Those feats you can do by going at light speed. So yeah, I feel like a lot of these guys make up these false, uh, you know, how do you say, uh, power rankings and stuff, and they go based off that and they try to convince everybody to believe in this is how uh, the power system works. When in reality, that's not true. So yeah, no disrespect to him, but I think that Seth the Programmer and Chuck have a ton, and not just them, Surfbone, all these other big named, uh, you know, um, uh, you, channels where they basically do power scaling and showcase how powerful these characters are. They have a lot of inconsistencies and things that they're wrong about, but for some reason, the fan base has gotten so used to hearing them, they think that they know everything. Personally, from what I've seen and from what I know, a lot of stuff they say is incorrect, especially when you look back at the source material, like such as comics, and read it. You can find out a lot of holes in their arguments, and a lot of times they didn't really thoroughly read what they're, uh, you know, thoroughly understand what they're reading. So, yeah, I disagree with the uh, Cosmic Armor Superman. Uh, he's nowhere near that powerful as he's always stated. And inaccessible speed, all those other speeds are useless because moving at the speed of light already does that. And that's not just, oh, one specific universe. That's just how it works. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll try to make more content like this. I will definitely find more YouTube channels where they do power scaling and point out their flawed power scaling. I will obviously give them credit when they're right because I'm not going to say they're always wrong. But a lot of times they get stuff incorrect and I feel like people just accept it when in reality it's just wrong and they don't know what they're talking about most of the time. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for next time.